Welcome back. All right, so I watch a lot of hockey. People know this. It's kind of a known thing about me. It's kind of my thing. Um, and yes, I'm wearing the, the jersey that the Ducks made for me. So I figured this is a good time to use this. Um, and I, I do have some pet peeves from when I'm watching hockey on television. This is just on TV, not in person. Um, in person, I don't really have any pet peeves, to be honest. Uh, I did see Amanda Stein, who's a New Jersey Devils beat reporter, talking about how cold it is at Honda Center in Anaheim. It really is. That is a cold arena. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna kid around. That is that is a cold. Might be the coldest arena I've been in. So I was I was glad to see a beat reporter agreeing on that. But that is that is not even. I'm even qualified as a pet peeve. That's just you should wear a hoodie if you're going to Honda Center. Uh, but yeah. So viewing pet peeves from all the hockey that I watch, and I've gone through. I've got ten. You guys can let me know what your pet peeves are watching hockey games because I'm sure you have some as well. They may not be on the board. And I'm going to start with the last minute commercial breaks. I, I don't know whose idea this was to start having commercial breaks with a minute, minute and a half, sometimes 40 seconds. Um, I swear there was a game the other night where there was like 38 seconds left in the period. And they're like, well, we're going to go to break. And I'm like, why? Why are you doing this? Why? Why are you going to break? Couldn't this minute or minute and a half of commercials be interspliced into the intermission? Like, couldn't, couldn't you do that? I, I just don't understand why we have a commercial break with that little amount of time left in the period because almost nothing ever happens after that either because it's only 40 seconds of hockey. Everybody's rested. I, I just, I don't understand it. Um, it. It's one of those bewildering, baffling things. But again, you guys can let me know your thoughts. Now, something I've noticed lately, and the last couple of years especially, is how every arena plays the same songs. And now we've gotten to the point where the sing-along songs, yeah, they're in every arena. It used to be that one would have all the small things and one or two would have Take Me Home Country Roads. And now it's all of them. Um, Friends in Low Places, yeah, we're going to play that in all of them. And it just, I don't know, it, it takes that, there should be a feeling of in certain arenas, there's certain songs, right? And I, and I understand like that may sound weird, but I used to really enjoy, and by used to, I mean like 15 years ago, when I was watching hockey games, each building had different music. So like St. Louis always stood out to me. They had fantastic music. I would I would listen to the music playing in St. Louis and be like, man, that DJ's fantastic. Listen to the songs they're playing. They'd be songs I wouldn't hear anywhere else. Now everybody plays the same songs. There it is absolutely bewildering. It just it makes it all just background noise. I know it may be a minor thing, but that's why it's pet peeves and not things that really make me angry at the top of the board. But it it just I don't know, something's been lost. Something's been lost in that now the DJs all play the same music and now everybody has to sing along to Country Roads. Everybody gets to play along to sing along to all the small things. Mr. Brightside. It just, eh, I, I don't know, it, it takes something away. Because then when you hear that song, you hear people singing along, you don't go, oh, that's Washington, that's St. Louis. Now it's just, oh, take me home Country Roads. Where is it? Stockholm, Sweden. That makes sense. I just, I, I find it just, <laughs> again, pet peeves, absolutely. But it just, it doesn't feel like there's much in the way of, of difference with the music in the arenas right now. Um, interviews during gameplay. I've talked about this before. I don't like it. I do, I really think that when the game is going on, all of the attention of the announcers should be on the gameplay. Now, there are exceptions. There are, there are exceptions where I've thought, okay, that's all right. Like, you're interviewing somebody's mom and that player scores. That's kind of fun. And that has happened. But... Or you're interviewing the goalie's mother and you could just see she's really nervous during the interview. But again, you shouldn't be interviewing people during gameplay. It, it shouldn't be happening. And it's really frustrating when I'm, I'm watching a game and they're interviewing somebody during gameplay and you'll see a power play starts, uh, a team's pressing during said power play, and nobody's talking about it. The announcers aren't saying, oh, so-and-so's going to the power play. They're just, they're still, it's just an interview. Well, if the interview is more important than what's going on on the ice... Again, to me, you're telling the audience what's going on on the ice is not as important as this guy up in the booth. Isn't he great? And and I I, I just I think it detracts. There are times where I'm watching games where if there's if there's this interview going on and I find it really distracting, I just mute the TV. I'm like I, I have to mute this because I'm having a hard time tracking what's going on on the ice because nobody's paying attention who's actually broadcasting the game to what's going on on the ice. Um, the double header thing, I've talked about this before. I'm talking about it again. TNT, double headers ideally are three hours apart. So your game's at four, your game's at seven. Your game's at 4.30 or 7.30. The two and a half hours between the start times doesn't work. 
The other thing that drives me nuts, and I'm pretty sure TNT and ESPN both do this, but the doubleheader is, so you finish one game, then go to the other. But they don't. They finish the one game, they spend 15 minutes reviewing that game and talking to players from that game, and then they set up the other game. And I can understand that in the playoffs. In the regular season, it's, I don't know, it feels kind of weird because it's a regular season game that's one out of 82 games. And why are you delaying a puck drop so you can talk to a player after the game or you can sit and talk about it? Like, it just, it's it's weird. Um, generally speaking, in Canada, the game's done, it's done. Just saying, and, and for every other broadcast in the States, too, game's done, it's done. They have a post-game show. But I, there's nothing else where it just delays going to the next game because I want to sit and talk. Um, I, I'm not a fan. I don't like the delayed puck drops. I feel bad for people who um, normally the start time for a game is 7 o'clock locally. And now all of a sudden they're looking at an 8.20 or an 8.30 start time. It, it, it's a long time. It, it really is. It's, and it, it's, it's odd to me because I, I don't know how that, that necessarily benefits the product like i feel like if you go from let's say boston's playing carolina and they have an exciting game goes to a shootout and carolina wins in a shootout and it's five to four and carolina clinches home ice in the first round and then the announcer says now we're going to take you straight out to la where the puck's just dropping between the la kings and the vancouver canucks and you go right to puck drop for game two that's i think how it should work that's honestly that's i think how it should work when it's a double header you go straight from one game to the other. And then after that second game, if you want to go back to the studio and you want to have them talk about what they watched that night, great. But but if you want to keep that excitement, you go straight from game one to game two. Just straight to, here's puck drop. That's, I think, how it should work. Um, number five on the board is color announcers who talk too much. And and this is, this is not that common. I'm not going to call anybody out. Nope. But there are some color commentators around the National Hockey League who, when the play-by-play -play guy should be able to talk, will just keep talking. And sometimes it's, I want to talk about when I played in the game and how the game worked, or I want to complain about there was a penalty that sh should have been called that wasn't, or was called that shouldn't have been, and they'll just keep going. And so the play-by-play -play announcer is kind of stuck listening to them while the play is going on. And then maybe they get a word in here and there, and I'm thinking to myself, they maybe get kind of irritated a little bit here because they're they they want to call the play by play, stuff's going on and the color announcer just won't let it go, and and won't stop. And again, um, it it I'm I'm not naming anybody in particular, uh, but you know it when you hear it when you're like okay all right yeah that's a great yeah uh huh, you know I was a shoe shine boy for Wayne Gretzky. You don't say all right let's talk about the game shall we? Um, missing starts of games on Sportsnet. I talked about this on the weekend. It's what drives me nuts with the Sportsnet. So in Canada, there are times where I don't have access to anything but the Canadian feeds. You know, I know NordVPN, blah, 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 whatever. I'm not doing it. So Sportsnet will have the national rights to, say, three games that day, and they're overlapping. Well, they won't give you access on... Uh, NHL Center Ice, because NHL Center Ice knows it's a Sportsnet national broadcast. This year, they've started to where Sportsnet will show the start of those other games on Sportsnet Plus. Last year, there were times where they're like, oh, if you want to see the start of this game, go over to Sportsnet Plus. So I go to Sportsnet Plus, I would load up the feeds, and um, it was just showing the game that wasn't over yet. And I was like, that's not the start of the other game. That drives me crazy. And, and what drives me crazy with it, too, is there's what? have Sportsnet Plus, or Sportsnet 1, Sportsnet 360, Sportsnet Pacific, West, Ontario, and East. You have six networks. You can't have one of those networks go to the other game? Seriously? You have to have all of them waiting until that other game finishes? So you're telling people, if you want to see the starts of these games, you better get over to Sportsnet Plus. Now, I have a Sportsnet Plus subscription because for, for what I do here, for all you fine people on the internet, I kind of sort of have to. So I have to have both Center Ice and Sportsnet Plus if I want to keep up on everything. It used to be that I was only able to track six games at max at any point in time. Now I'm up to nine because of Sportsnet Plus where I can watch games on my computer. But yeah, there were times where I couldn't see the starts of certain games because they owned the national rights to those games. So if you have the national rights to those games... Make sure the start of that game, maybe, maybe Nashville, Anaheim doesn't matter to most of the viewers, but there's going to be those viewers who go, I want to watch that game 
tune in and go, I have to wait until this game's over. The most aggravating part, too, is when the game's like 8 nothing, And you're waiting for that game to finish so you can watch the other game that's already like 10 minutes in. And it looks like it's a pretty darn good game from what social media is telling you and from what from what the, the NHL app's telling you. So it's just it's one of those things, again, just pet peeves. Uh, showing injuries from 50 different angles. I, I don't I don't know who that's for. Like you show a guy gets hurt, especially if it's if it's a really nasty injury, and they show it over and over and oh, we've got another angle of that injury. Why? No, we don't need to see the other angles. <laughs> we don't. We don't. Like it's. I I can understand. And there are exceptions. I can understand if the initial injury looks like it's an ankle, but then you find out well actually it's his knee. This angle shows that it's his knee that got hurt. Then I'm I'm like you know what? I can get that. But when it's just it's an ugly injury and you're showing it as many times as possible. It's like, I don't I don't know that you need to show this injury again. I, I don't know that you do. And again, especially if it's something that, that's pretty serious and the player's really, really hurt. So I, I would say don't. To to the producers, the directors, just just maybe don't. You know, when the guys in the booth are going, hey, look, I found another angle. That's okay. It's okay, Billy. We don't need to show that other angle. It's okay. We already got the other 49 angles, so we don't need to show the 50th. Um, and then gambling. So the last time I talked about gambling ads, right away there were people commenting going, if you don't like gambling ads, you know, you can just uh, you can get an ad blocker. You can just skip the ads. You can you don't have to watch the ads. You can mute your TV. All right. Cool thing, Skippy. Uh, but the gambling mentions are now during the play. They're during the play. They're all the time. They are all the freaking time. All right, I'm gonna take ten seconds out for FanDuel. What does FanDuel say? Well, right now the odds say the odds of New Jersey spontaneously combusting plus five thousand. So uh, I don't know. It's not very likely, but if spontaneous human combustion happens in this game, you could be rich. Like I don't. Why? 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 I don't. I don't get it. I don't. It's constant. It's constant. It's all the time. It's every every face off. There's here's the odds. Here's oh my gosh. Why? Just don't. Just let us enjoy the game for a while. I don't understand how many different mentions there have to be during the play. Oh, the over-under was uh, five and a half, but since there's ten goals in this game already, I'd take the over. Like, I didn't... <sighs> I know. There's people who are like, uh, it's just it's nitpicking. Well, it's pet peeves. So there's a little bit of nitpicking there. But yeah, the gambling gets to be a bit much. It's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And it's from a league that, what, before Vegas came in, what they said was, well, we want to make sure they, they can't call themselves the Las Vegas Aces. We'd rather not have any sort of gambling mentions. That was rumored at the time that they wanted to make sure there was no gambling mention, nothing gambling related with the team. So they get the Golden Knights. There's no gambling related anything with Vegas. And now there's gambling everything everywhere all the time. So maybe maybe that wasn't necessarily a big deal. Um, I, I've talked about the digital ad boards. I have to mention it again here. The flickering players, the disappearing players. Um, I was on the fence about whether or not to include that one. But when I was talking to Yvonne while I put this list together, that's the first thing she mentioned was players disappearing into the boards. It's white jerseys against a white background. So, yeah, they disappear. Uh, it'd be like if they used green screen, uh, then all the green jerseys would disappear into into that space. And, and it is distracting, and I know Gary keeps telling us if you're distracted by that, then you're not looking at the right thing. Where am I supposed to look, Gary, if I'm not allowed to look at the players? Do I just look at the ice surface until they stop flickering? I don't. What do I do? Uh, the digital ad boards aren't going anywhere. I just I hope they, they refine the technology so players are no longer flickering, disappearing into the boards. And in some, in some instances on some broadcasts, it's really obvious that those boards are digital. And that can be distracting because it, it looks completely different than everything else you're looking at on the screen. So I, I understand there's people say, oh, you shouldn't look. But it, it's hard not to when it's completely different. It's this bright, vibrant, and the rest of the environment's kind of dull in comparison. It, it's hard not to look. And it's designed that way. They definitely want you to look at the boards because otherwise... Uh, advertiser go to the NHL and go, so what's this about people not looking at them and saying that they're not really visible? Ah, we just say that just so people leave us alone about it. And then the last one is something I've noticed a lot this year. And, and again, for me, because I'm scrolling through a bunch of games, it's frustrating when the Chiron, which is what shows your score. And this happens a lot with Valley. It feels like with Valley broadcasts, it happens more than others, where the Chiron will turn into ads. 
and I mean multiple ads. So it's not showing the score, it's not showing how many shots they've had, it's not showing anything game related, it's just ads. Um, the Menards ad comes up a lot if you're watching St. Louis or Minnesota. It, it, and again, I understand that advertising dollars are important, but it just feels really kind of intrusive that the score of the game is not showing on the TV, the shots are not showing on the TV. Sometimes there's a power play going on, and it may not tell us how much time's left on the power play, because they have to tell us we need to go to Chevron and get gas. So I, I, I guess I could start putting that on my review boards. I, I guess when the Chiron isn't showing me the score, just put got to go to Menards, which is weird because there isn't a Menards anywhere around here. I'm pretty sure they're in Canada. But um, that's how you can tell I watch a lot of American broadcasts because all those American, you know. Um, and it's also, it's also mean that Jack in the Box isn't in Canada and their food's fantastic. Anytime I go to the States, I'm always very happy with Jack in the Box. And I get to watch all those commercials for footlong churros. Or, anyway, whole, that's a whole other discussion point. But um, yeah, the, the Chiron turning into ads during the play is just, it's, it's aggravating. I don't think it's necessary. You could put the ads almost anywhere. The Chiron being at the bottom on Bally is bad enough. Like it's, it's bad enough that it's at the bottom of the screen instead of at the top. But the fact that it, it turns into advertisements, too, it can get really, really aggravating. All right. Anyways, uh, Gary's plane's buzzing my house, so I got to wrap this up before Gary decides to crash into said house. Uh, but yeah, let me know your, your pet peeves watching hockey games. I just figured this was a fun thing to talk about today. Not serious. Not at all. Uh, just things that during a game can be really kind of a little bit frustrating. And when all of these add up and all of these can be in the same, all of these can be in the same broadcast. Absolutely. Uh, it can get kind of frustrating. But let me know what frustrates you watching hockey games. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event that you have not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.